Hello again, this is Grant Abbott from Gabbit Media and you're watching my version of Sculpt January and we're on to number 23 and the theme was Insanity and hopefully you can see on the screen my insane character that's strapped up uh, ready to be wheeled into position wherever he's going. Uh, it's based on the um, uh, Hannibal, uh, the uh, character uh, from Silence of the Lambs, that's one. Uh, yeah, uh, so uh, this is uh, me sculpting away. Uh, I chose to go with the blob, which was, seems a bit crazy, but it's not your traditional figure because you can't really see the arms. Well, the arms and legs aren't separate as such. They're all one sort of blobby thing that is strapped together uh, in a straight jacket and taped together in sort of these loose trousers. Uh, so um, my idea sort of developed as I went along. I thought at first I'd just do a, a character in a straight jacket uh, and I was thinking of some sort of weird brainy person, hence the big head, uh, so sort of super villain in some way. And then I thought uh, actually uh, some legs and then uh, remembering Silence of the Lambs. Uh, the second one where he's sort of wheeled around in this funny contraption. Uh, I can't really remember it that well, it's a long time ago since I've seen it. Uh, but I did get a reference image and I didn't really check where which film it was from, uh, but that one anyway. Uh, so uh, just getting the basic shape of this character uh, and then doing that sort of trolley thing later. And uh, it, was, it was kind of tough finding reference images for straight jackets and asylums and things. I was expecting much more to be out there, but I'm not spending a lot of time looking for reference images. It's kind of funny when I was talking about finding reference in reference images for the banana a few week, a few days ago. Uh, someone said, well, why didn't you just buy a banana? And I thought, yeah, it took me ages to remember that I had one downstairs all the time. So <laughs> it's it, weird things, uh, the sort of uh, time constraints does to you sometimes. Uh, but yes, yeah, so it took me a little while to find reference images. Um, I'll try and remember to put them on the screen now. Uh, but uh, yeah, they're sort of general straight jackets and things. It was kind of funny when I was looking for the mask reference image because then uh, that sort of uh, has uh, relations to uh, bondage sites and stuff like that. So uh, the, the few funny things came up, even on Pinterest, which is kind of safe search was on and it still came up with these places you could buy these uh, sex toys, it seemed. Anyway, uh, enough of that. There's always something odd in my sculpts, it seems, uh, so sorry about that. Uh, anyway, back to the sculpt itself. Uh, always tricky with the shoes, always uh, feet and shoes, getting them flat onto a plane, uh, and I should have put a plane in place so I knew that they were flat uh, rather than doing it by eye. Uh, always you know, use your side and front views. I do like Blender 2.8. When you go into side view and front view, it goes into orthographic mode, which is very sensible, really. Uh, it's funny that it's taken that long for them to realize that's the right thing to do. And uh, f I, I wouldn't have realized as well, but now that I use it, I suddenly think, yeah, why is this not the, has, why has this not been the format for a long time? I turned symmetry on fairly early, uh, symmetry off fairly early. It's always a tricky one as well, is when do you turn symmetry off? Because it means you're gonna do twice the amount of work. So perhaps I should have done a bit more on the trousers before uh, sorting out the arms, uh, but uh, creases don't look good with symmetry anyway. And I wanted this sort of to be baggy creased clothing, which I don't think turned out that well. I was sort of rushing, should have looked at much more reference images for sort of baggy clothing. Uh, I couldn't, like I said, I couldn't find many for straight jackets, uh, weirdly enough. Uh, I don't know why, I just expect there to be more out there. There probably is, and I'm just uh, looking up the wrong term. Maybe it's a restraint jacket or something like that, and uh, it's named something different somewhere else, and I'm using a slang term for some reason. Anyway, so you can see me doing basic creases. Uh, you do need a reasonable resolution to get your creases to look right, uh, but I think I need a fair bit of work. Clothing's quite hard, uh, that's a definite, uh, because the creases, they just go all over the place and they seem random, but they're not random. There's uh, places they will pinch and uh, places uh, where they'll open up a bit more. Uh, so you've got to sort of think about where they're pinching. And I hadn't done the straps at this point and they probably would pinch more around the straps and things. So that wasn't the best form really. And I was a bit lazy with the straps uh, because when I'm on my uh, 
Mobile Studio Pro, I don't really like doing any actual modeling because it's quite awkward uh, trying to work with the sort of pen and touch screen and all that sort of stuff. So I'd much rather just sculpt away like I'm drawing. Uh, so the straps would have been better if I'd done them with a plane that was uh, snapped on uh, to my sculpt. Uh, and then I could boolean it later uh, if I wanted to, um, or just leave it as a separate strap. I didn't do any buckles, I was lazy as well. So it's got no buckles and it's just kind of attached to the back of the uh, trolley with these cubes uh, and they're not really particularly seen so I was sort of doing shortcuts there. Uh, in terms of the mask it's kind of hard surface modeling so the techniques you use are the crease brush and the pinch brush. Pinch brush is really great. Uh, generally speaking I think it works much better if you go to relative detail but it's uh, because I was doing a character I was a bit worried about going over the top on uh, my faces so I didn't put relative detail on uh, and that would be affected by how close I was with the brush. There's lots of tutorials uh, in the description in case you need any of those. Uh, I always say it because some people are suddenly new to my videos and haven't heard me say it so sorry to all those regulars uh, who have heard me say that over and over again. Also graphics tablets, uh, links are in the description, they're affiliated links so you'll be supporting me if you uh, buy one from those uh, particular sites. I imagine uh, for the most part most of my viewers I think I've looked up are from America uh, and therefore uh, the affiliated links aren't going to be very successful because they'll take it to a UK site so it's uh, all kind of pointless but at least it's, I'm trying to get some sort of income out of these things uh, which uh, enables me to kind of make a career out of it and make more videos so uh, it's a win-win for everybody uh, particularly me in the money terms uh, if I actually sold any or made any money this doesn't really happen with this sort of thing <laughs> I did sell a couple of models from Sketchfab just recently about three models uh, which were about sort of ten dollars each so I get about 64% uh, commission, so uh, I'm raking it in now, I tell you. Anyway, that's me rambling again. It's late in the day, sorry about that. Um, so I've done uh, a couple of sculpts today, and this was the first one that I was finishing off. In fact, I'm on my third of the day because I know I'm going to get behind because I've got a parent evening tomorrow night and a day of filming on Thursday, so oh, it's all over the place. Oh, tough, tough life. Anyway. <laughs> So this is what happens when I get tired. I start rambling and making no sense. I'm sure there were some other interesting things that I was supposed to talk about. Um, so yes, I've said about how doing, I, I was just gonna do a sort of bust, but then it turned into a whole body. I thought that'd be more interesting. But I've sort of said that. Um, clothing being hard um, and could not find any, oh yeah, I couldn't find any reference images for being sort of strapped in. Uh, so that was not frustrating, but it's just, it, doing the research uh, is really important, but it's quite time consuming as well. And some artists are brilliant. They just, they can take uh, anything from their mind and just come up with something, whereas uh, I really need lots of reference images. So you can see me being a bit lazy here and just going around with the, um, what's it, the clay strips tool for a belt and then uh, doing the sort of uh, hard surface technique of the um, edge crease, the crease brush uh, set to add and the pinch brush to sort of uh, pinch it in. So the straps look a little bit rough and a bit too fat really. Uh, they kind of work, they, they work well enough. I'm, I'm pleased with the character, I'm, I'm pleased with how it turned out. But that's one of the issues when you're um, doing clothing like this or straps or anything like armor and things like that where you're building it up from the base mesh you can see there there's a sort of blobbiness to it and it's hard to get that nice crisp edge and lines uh, and that's why it's better to do them as a separate object and then boolean them in if you have to make them one object in the end let's say it's a game character um, or uh, just leave them as separate objects uh, I'm doing a uh, I'm sort of doing a lot of shortcuts Eevee is allowing me to do lots of shortcuts now because I don't have to reduce my model and bake out all the normal maps. I can just put the ambient occlusion on and it does a reasonably good job. It's better if I can bake out the cavity maps uh, and ideally I'd do that but it's time consuming. It takes me at least half an hour and that's half an hour when I, which I could be sculpting or doing the video and things. So uh, I do, uh, I've been avoiding that and just rendering the, the high poly versions. So sometimes there's two million faces there and I can obviously decimate it if it's too high, but uh, it's nice to be able to keep that high resolution. And EV still renders within uh, sort of six seconds or so per frame, and that's that's great. So I can cut shortcuts there. Cut shortcuts. Do get have shortcuts? Do shortcuts? Oh, I don't know. I'm tired, like I say. Anyway, uh, 
in a moment I do the sort of cage, uh, not cage, the, the trolley that he's on. We call them lump trolleys or sack, sack barrows they're sometimes called. Um, and uh, that was an interesting technique. I remember seeing a video a while ago about someone saying uh, this is how you can do pipes. And I thought, oh, well, I'll give that technique a go. So uh, you, um, it's very similar to how I did a low poly tree. So if you wanted to look up that tutorial, it's using the skin modifier again, uh, but using snapping. So here I am uh, snapping my points uh, to the grid uh, so that they're nice and sort of even. Uh, and then with each of my vertices, um, you, um, you do a bevel on the corners. Uh, that's quite interesting. Uh, I was, I couldn't find the command to do an individual uh, extrude here on uh, the vertices. So someone can tell me where that is in 2.8, uh, or even if there is one, because it's not something I do very often. Uh, so I'm trying to bevel the edges, and there's some sort of glitch here. And then I realised there was some doubles, and I must have tried to extrude a couple of times. But yes, bevelling the vertices. So uh, you can use the bevel command, but you have to choose vertex only. Uh, and that's quite useful and then you convert it into a curve uh, so you, um, you make your points with the skin modifier uh, so they have single vertices convert it to a curve and add a bit of glitchiness here for some reason make sure you've removed all doubles and uh, it's not perfect because like you see there's a glitch there for some strange reason so once I uh, remade it uh, which I think I'll do in a second um, I just had to tidy it up a little bit. And that's, it's probably best not to have a too high resolution on your curve. So once you convert it to a curve, then you can uh, bevel your curve and it's quite a nice smooth uh, curve and shape. Uh, and that, then you can convert it back into a mesh. It seems a bit convoluted and I'll probably do a tutorial, a tutorial on this separately. But it's quite a nice one to be able to do pipes nice and quickly, uh, generally speaking, unless you get these sort of weird glitches. Uh, it, it, which is surprising really, I don't really understand where this glitch came from, but it might be that generally pipes uh, don't stick out from each other all over the place like this, so that might be the reason I'm getting a bit of glitching. But it's not too bad because it's not too high resolution, so you can uh, use vertex snapping, push them together and then remove doubles. Yeah, that's how I did it anyway. Yes, both of them had some glitches, so it obviously was where, because the curves aren't really designed to have curves splitting out from curves so I think that was the issue uh, that I was having. having. Uh, so yeah put it behind him, did a mirror modifier and then sort of uh, did all this structure. I was off my mobile studio pro at this point so I, I was uh, doing modeling at this point uh, because I don't mind. It's so much easier on a computer than it is on a tablet when you're doing modeling that is a disadvantage of a graphics tablet. I don't find them very useful at all for uh, general everyday blendering of hard surfaces and things or box modeling but sculpting is, is a must for me uh, and no I don't uh, I still get questions do I use a mouse uh, for this uh, I, I would find it so difficult to do this with a mouse it would be massively time consuming uh, and not impossible just really time consuming definitely uh, I suppose maybe you can be a bit more precise I, in fact I don't think so I don't think there's any advantage to using a mouse for sculpting um, sometimes I'm using a mouse when I'm using the anchor brush uh, just because you can sort of click and drag as quickly as you can with uh, your pen uh, anyway uh, so uh, building the rest of the trolley uh, simple stuff uh, really just basic bo box modeling I didn't join any of these together just did them as separate models um, because I thought that'd be um, separate meshes I should say uh, because I thought that would be nice and quick and simple. Uh, just using the bevel command, a uh, very uh, important command that for hard surface modeling, the bevel. Uh, so control B, uh, get used to that if you're a hard surface modeler uh, or you want to be. Uh, if you're a hard surface modeler then you obviously know about it, <laughs> I would have thought anyway. Um, yes, I'm not really a hard surface uh, modeler and lots of people ask me uh, to do tutorials on that but there's, I've still got a long way to go in learning that uh, and more a sort of uh, sculptor organic uh, sort of things. I thought I'd do eyeballs this time because uh, they're quite a key aspect of this character in a way. Uh, whereas, uh, because uh, he's got a mask, he's, his hands are strapped up, so the first place you're likely to look is at the eyes. So I thought I'd uh, do a bit more um, complexity, not complexity, but detail in the eyes, and therefore a nice round sphere would help. Uh, and then once I put the eyes in, you can do your eyelids with just a sphere uh, that's kind of uh, rotated so the ends are at the sides and then you cut 
uh, sections out of them. This is a UV sphere and they sort of become like eyelids. So you take your original sphere and just scale it up slightly and it becomes an eyelid. Um, uh, that's sort of a quick way to do it and probably a slightly better way, but I quite like to be able to adapt my eyebrows, uh, eyelashes, eyelids, <laughs> the word. I like to be able to adapt those with sculpting just so I can pull out expressions. Uh, so it's still got symmetry turned on at this point, uh, but I do turn it off a bit later on uh, just to get a bit of variation in the expression because that's the kind of key to this uh, character is that sort of, it's a, you can only see the eyes, so you have to uh, sort of imagine uh, what sort of insane characters behind there and obviously the regalia of the uh, mask and the um, uh, straight jacket should <laughs> enable us to realize that he's mad in some way, but the expression is important as well. So once I've got to uh, a stage where I'm happy with most of the stuff, I'm doing a bit of tidying up now. So cleaning up the lines, and that's something I often uh, miss out because it's very time consuming and you get a general feel for the model without that. Uh, for the f but if I was uh, making this model to sell perhaps or anything like that, then I'd want to tidy it up a bit more. Or if it was a portfolio piece and um, I really wanted to go to town on it, then I'd smarten them up a bit more than I am doing. So um, a Asymmetry, uh, really important, just the end bit of your sculpt. Uh, it's uh, that, uh, for me, it's very important anyway to get real character uh, because nothing we see is uh, truly symmetrical, uh, generally speaking. Um, there's always some sort of, uh, you know, distortion in a sense, uh, imperfections and things. Uh, so um, I try to steer clear of that where I can. So there we go, have it, the final piece. Uh, I did a bit of um, up lighting, which is uh, sort of disorientating lighting used in horror and um, well, what's it? Horror and thrillers and things uh, to distort the fe features and faces. Uh, so there we go. So we've also got the Discord server. Um, I forgot to put this in, um, so that's why there's a jump cut there. Uh, not many this time because of the way I've recorded this. So it's sort of a lot in a, a day. So. Um, there's only a few since the last time, but some really good ones there from Mr. M, and I can't remember who this one's from, but uh, it looks pretty cool. Someone using ZBrush uh, for a change. Uh, I thought I'd, uh, seeing as there weren't many, I thought I'd go across the competition that's on at the moment. It's a long running competition, uh, so it's been going for a month because I haven't got time with the Sculpt January to review the competition. Uh, but it is, the, the theme is sci fi, and there's some interesting pieces. Um, I'm trying to remember who that one's from. But it's uh, very good, uh, like that. Uh, sort of a, a, a sci-fi sculpt. Uh, and uh, lots of chat going on, which is quite nice. Uh, the really interesting one there, uh, that character's gonna be really good. So a few pieces, a few works in progress. Uh, looking forward to seeing the results. Lots of people doing some Star Trek, uh, Star, Star Trek, Star Wars. I've just been watching Star Trek, actually, the new one. Uh, some Star Wars stuff. Uh, so uh, uh, I'm not a big fan of doing sort of fan posts. I don't know, I think it's because I'm fearful that you can't really use it in your portfolio because no one will take you seriously if you just do sort of Star Wars stuff. But it is great fun as well, so um, I don't blame anybody for doing it. That's a really interesting one with the displacement uh, modifier, I think it is, uh, where you can do sort of a Borg cube like that, which is Star Trek that time. Uh, anyway, uh, that's it from me. There's the final piece again. Uh, and uh, thank you for watching. Thanks if you're still with me. And thanks for all the support. And I'll see you next time.